During this demo, we're going to be making this bracelet. I love the way these colours give you that oriental feel, the rich gold. You've got the champagne gold with the red of the um, Swarovski with the black of the agate. Absolutely dramatic, dramatic piece. So we're going to make this piece. Um, and what we're going to need, we use all three of the gauges of wire in your kit. The black eye gate and the Swarovski. You're going to need some round nose pliers, flat nose pliers, cutters and some baling pliers to make your um, clasp with. Because all this is out of the kit, there's absolutely nothing added. So we're going to get started. We're going to concentrate on the central piece. Now I'm actually going to weave, I'll, I'll demonstrate the weaving section um, with a different coloured weave wire just, just to make it show up slightly. However, it is lovely when you use a contrast colour and it, you can get some amazing effects. So do play around with that, especially with the, the two kits we've got on today. So you want about 35 centimetres of wire, of your one mil wire, five lengths. Now I'm going to, do, to use shorter lengths, purely... Um, to show you the weaves then I'll go on to the bigger length piece so you want your five pieces and we're going to do if I turn this over this section at the back in in a basket weave okay so it's a five strand we uh, five core wire weave and I'll move this over to there there we go and we're going to splay you'll notice I splay them out now when you're when you're doing the piece on the longer sections you might want to um, clamp these you can use low tack tape to stick them together because you're going to be working in the middle so slightly off off center of the middle you're going to start and you're doing approximately just over an inch so we're going to start with the bottom um, wire now the other thing you want to do or you might want to do is actually put a little bit of low tack tape with a different colour blob or a number or a letter on so that it's easier to see which is which. But if you splay them, um, you shouldn't be too bad. So we're going to wrap around the bottom one. I'm keeping a couple of inches of wire to um, act as a tail. Then we're going to go over the net one and two. I'm going to call them one, two. See, mine are already turning and they will do that. There we go. One, two, three, four, and five. So we're going to come between one and two, go over two and three, come between two and three, go over three and four. There we go. If they do turn like that, make sure you're going round the right one. It'll soon become obvious if you're not. So you've become come between three and four, then we're going to go around four and five and back down between three and four so we're coming back down to here so you've gone over two and down two we're now coming back down sorry i'll flick those so we're going to come between five and four so you're going up if i spread this out you're going up two at a time so you go up over two at the front and then come between them so you're going round one at the back coming down you're going round one at the front and two at the back so we come now between two and three and then you go just around three let me get that in there then you come down between one and two and then you just go around two and then you're going to go all the way round back between two and three so we're ready to do the next step up at going two at a time so i'm going to go through that quickly again so you can come between one and two i'm going to turn those a lot more out there we go between one and two over two and three between two and three over three and four between three and four over four and five back down to between three and four and then just over four back down come between two and three over three between uh, one and two over two and then you round the bottom 
so you can see you're getting this zigzag but it's a very close format and if you turn it over it's actually double-sided so each side looks the same so it won't matter when you're finished which one as you're going along just remember to squidge up um, and like I say you want to do about and I'll show you on here you want to do about an inch section okay so when you've done this central inch section we're going to start on these four pieces of weave so this is a five and two weave great weave for shanks and we're going to start on we're ignoring the middle one so we're going to bend that out of the way and we're doing it two by two so take the first lot out of the way we want the um the five part to be that one not the outside one so you want the five part in the middle so we're going to go round one two three four five now when you've done your five you're coming you're going to go around both of them you can turn this up the other way so so that that's towards you it depends how you weave um and that's not not a problem so we're then going to go round two twice and then come and you're doing one two three four five and then you're going to go around the two twice now I don't pull really tightly when I'm going around the two because that will clamp this shut and stop you getting this nice close work if you pull it tight on the second one then you'll 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 be okay now you'll see also I'm kind of going side to side rather than round that's fine with the short ones when you've got longer ones a make sure you keep your hand there but when you go round make sure you fetch your thread down before you pull on this otherwise what will happen is you'll pull that wire okay so you can still go around just around that and through it's entirely up to you okay so you want to do 21 of each section when you've done on that section you're going to pull those two out of the way and then do it on these two sections and then you'll go back to the start let me just trim this wire here and again you're going to do just catch hold of that tail there we go you're going to start with the inner wire of the two is going to be your five three four five and two one two three four five and two okay squidge it down make sure it's neat and then you'll end up with a piece that has your middle section done and then your four parts of your five and two so this is now going to be this central piece okay so we've got a little bit of a twist now we're going to bend these over each other so i want to pull this around try if you can to do it all together if you move one to try and get another wire to bend exactly is quite difficult so try and hold them all together and pull them around you'll note i'm holding quite close to the top here wherever you hold will dictate how tight that curve is if i held down there it would curve all the way down here I just want this tight top bit to curve so I'm going to pull it round hold on all together and fetch it through okay so that is our first bend we're going to tweak that when we come to put the beads in because we obviously want a bit more space there so I'm just going to pull that a little bit tighter but you can see how if you if you pull them differently you're going to get these coming at a different rate so keep them flat if you find these bend twist one way or the other don't worry too much about it get your flat nose pliers out and just bend, bend it back so that's that side so now we want to do the other side and we, we want to sort of keep the same direction going so turn it round the other way we want that to come round there and we're going to fetch that round this is the harder side because you've got to come over here and you want to feed down through there so we're going to get around there so you're actually coming around the wires if you want pull those out of the way and you want those to go in now I would bend them because you see what a mess it makes 
before you get to the point where you're putting them in. So almost force them into the bend first and then get that nice shape. Okay, because you're not going to see that part underneath. So now we've got our bend, we can tighten it up a little bit. So I want to push that one in a little bit. Okay, take your time with this. Don't um, don't think it's going to be done instantly. You can do this, and I, I, I can't remember whether I said with one mil, or you can do it with a 0.8. If you've got um, dexterity issues, I would recommend doing it with the 0.8. It's a little bit harder to do your um, wrapping. So when you've got to this point, we're actually going to take the middle wire out. I mean, it's beautiful when you've not pulled that too much. That's why I say do them all together. There we go. Push that one back into place. So I want to take this central one. Out. This is this is with the one mil. Now the, there's advantages to both. It's quicker to weave with the one mil because the difference between the 0.4 and the one mil um, is wider apart. So it's it's the one mil is sturdier, it makes it easier. It's more flexible to use the 0.8. So it's it's a personal ta taste thing. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually um, take the central one. Come here, undo. Let's do this side because that's already undone. Um, and we're just going to ease that one back a bit. So I want to take him, which is the central one. He's flipped there. There we go. I want to take him back and I'm going to ease him out of the way. So there we go. And we can take him behind and tie that into place. So do the same on both sides. And you can take him out, ease him back through, and we're going to take him around the other side. So now we want to ease the middle one and open that up a little bit more, because otherwise we're not going to get our gemstones through. So once you've got to that stage, thread on your beads. Now this has come, every time I do um, a design like this, um, I love this type of design they come out slightly different it, it's it's very difficult to get them exactly the same even for your demo bits but I could pull that tighter if I wanted so I've pre-threaded um I probably won't have enough now about 12 of the um Swarovski on I'm just gonna snip the end off but don't let them fall out and I'm going to feed that through into position so I want some of that thread I'm just going to temporarily wrap it around there without tightening those Alison there we go so we can feed those down now as I said because I've left this wider I'm going to make that smaller and um, it makes it a bit harder so tighten my curves round I'm going to pull these through a bit more all the time just just making sure they stay together in the plane there you go that's better so open that up still there we go and feed our did that the wrong side didn't I there we go feed our Swarovski into place now when you get to this point we're going to go through that gap. Come on. There we go. Through the gap. And then I want to come around, just wrap it in place around the um, back so that it's out of sight. And then we're going to come back up through there so that we can come back up through the other side. And it just means you're only using one piece. So that would go through there and come back up. And then we'd slide on our, our gates to finish that bit. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna concentrate on one side now because it's both the same each side. So we've got our 
point 0.8 going back up through there with our agates on. We now need to finish off the wires. You can trim off your point 0.4s out of the way because you shouldn't really need those. The one mil you've um, taken round out of the way, we were going to wrap around there. This can now secure these into position. Where there's because you've you've come round a loop where there's excess there, if you trim off at a two, so if you actually cut the two, the excess will just slide off so you don't actually have to unwrap it. So now what we need to do is trim, push that one over there. Let's pop these pliers down through there. Sorry, I'm sliding this all over the place. So we need two of these to add our loops for our chain and we want the other two to loop around. So I'm going to take the middle two, I think, and just pop a little loop. So trim as small as you can. You want about half a centimetre to a centimetre depending on your, on your round nose pliers. And I'm just going to pop a loop on the end of there and tuck it out of the way and the loop on the end of that one and tuck it out of the way. Okay, so, so those two are nicely flat. Make sure you haven't got any of that point 0.4 sticking up like there. Those are now flat. Make sure the, there's no end sticking out. So you can now trim off these. I've done them slightly bigger because you want them to protrude. That's a bit too big. And pop a loop now in these ready to attach your chain. You can use chain. You can use um, a beaded section. So if I show you here, so you've just got your loop sticking out and I've a chapped. All, all I've done is used my point eight to do a little looped chain um, with a clasp and that's all done and dusted.